Good morning, YouTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video. My wife just left to do errands. Today is January the 3rd, 2023. It is 9.46 in the morning. I am doing what I usually do in the mornings, having my devotions, re writing in my paper diary. I'm on page 8 this morning for the year 2023. Uh, I always, when I, when I start writing in January of a new year, I like it when I'm, I reach about page 300 because uh, then it feels more substantial in my hands, my diary. But usually I hit 300 probably January, probably in maybe March, I'll hit 300, page 300. So I'm reading, I thought what I would do is just basically show you what I'm reading right now this morning in the, the year 2023 in the mornings. I did show you, I got this book in the mail last month, the Trinity in the book of Revelation, seeing the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in John's Apocalypse by Brandon D. Smith. So I've been reading this, but this has, when I'm reading it, it reminds me of, of other things that I have read. <laughs> and one thing that came to my mind the other morning is, well, I forgot to, something I'll, I'll I did mention one of my recent videos. I was getting a book in the mail, a book on hermeneutics, uh, exegesis, and this is it. Biblical reasoning, Christological and Trinitarian rules for exegesis by R.B. Jamison and Tyler R. Whitman. And uh, so I've been, I'm halfway through this. I'm on chapter six. I've read 107 pages. The text is 238 pages. i really enjoying this. Uh, I highly recommend it if you're into biblical exegesis, uh, pre-critical hermeneutics. Highly recommend it. So I've been reading this book on the book of Revelations, and it reminds me of things that I have read in the past. And one thing... I, and this is what I was reading, uh, rereading this morning. Was a book I bought a number of years ago. It was. It's called Christ's Last Disclosure, Disclosure, Disclosure of Himself by William, William Greenhill. He lived from 1591 to 1677. Uh, this is published by Solia Gloria Publications, which no longer exist, but you can still. This is still available, and this is a. Uh, a series of sermons on Revelations 22 verses 16 and 17. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. And let him who a thirst come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. So I've been re I got this out yesterday and I read it when I was watching football and I was reading it this morning. And I read it a number of years ago, if I remember correctly. This came out in 1999. I think I bought this. Well, back in night, I when Sorry Gloria would put a new book out, I immediately bought them <laughs> because I was into collecting Puritan reprints. Uh, also, Banner Truth Trust has published William Greenhill's commentary on the prophecy of Ezekiel, which I have downstairs. Before you had Sorry Gloria, who are who start reprinting Puritan works. You had the Banner Truth Trust, which is found in England. They put out Puritan works, and one of them they did reminded me of another work 
that is based on a text in Revelations. And the, it's by John Flavel. It's found in volume four of his works. And the text for that, it's 11 sermons. And these sermons, many years ago, before I had the works of John Flavel, which came out in... My set came out in 1982, and they were first published. Well, now, obviously, this has appeared in reprint, and John Flavel lived from 1628, and he died in 1691, and he was a Puritan. And, uh, but in 1820, his works were, were, were published. And then the Banner of Truth published them in 1968. And then they reprinted them in 1982. And this is a set that I have. And in this volume four is a series of sermons uh, called England's Duty. And it's a, based on a text can't find it now. Uh, yeah, England's Duty, it's based on a text in Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. Now, these sermons, I first read them when I was living in California before I left California in 1978 to go to Reformed Bible College in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Baker Bookhouse published these sermons in a paperback called Christ Knocking at the Door. And the text for the sermons is 320, chapter 3 of Revelations, verse 20. Uh, 320, which reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. I don't know what happened to that paperback. I, I might still have it downstairs, but I, I haven't looked. But I do have the works of John Flavel, which I think I bought them when I was in, either in Bible college or in seminary. But... I got them out because that text from Revelations, uh, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. Yeah, I read that paperback when I was back in California. And as you all know, uh, I became a Christian in 1970. But I was really immature. I struggled with all kinds of matters of sin. And I got to a place in my spiritual life where I was really off in the far country. And I was just kind of, I had left the Richmond Rescue Mission where I had was on staff. And I was just kind of like in limbo. I didn't know what to do with my life. I wanted to go into the ministry. I wanted to, but I didn't know how exactly how to go about it. <laughs> But, and so I was working in a 7-Eleven store from 11 at night into, into the early morning. And I would, I would read uh, John Flavel, among other things. And I was reading those sermons in, by John Flavel, Christ Knocking at the Door. And the Lord used that book to bring me back to himself to repentance and faith. He also used a book by John Owen on the forgiveness of sins and also a book by J.C. Ryle called The New Birth. And I was reading those books and the Holy Spirit used them, God used them to bring me to a place of repentance and faith. And I was set free from my sin, my backsliding and my wayward ways and the Lord brought me back to himself, and that's when I decided to leave California, to burn the bridges, and just leave and go to Bible college. 
and to prepare myself for the gospel ministry. That was back in 1978-77. And, uh, but he used John Flavel. <laughs> Here in volume 4 of John Flavel's works, it's called Christ's Duty Under the Present Gospel Liberty, 11 Sermons on Revelations uh, chapter 3 verse 20 behold I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me and the first sermon is every offer of Christ to the soul of sinners is recorded and witnessed for the day of reckoning sermon 2 Jesus Christ is truly present with men in his ordinances and has to do with them and they with him. In Sermon 3, the hearts of men are by nature locked up and fast barred against Jesus Christ, their only Savior. Sermon 4, the patience of Christ great and admirable and the warning upon trifling and obstinate sinners. And then... Sermon 5, every conviction of conscience is a knock of Christ from heaven for entrance into their souls. Sermon 6, Jesus Christ, an earnest suitor for union and communion with the souls of sinners. And when I opened this book, that's where the, I had last, that was my favorite sermons on Sermon 6. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And it says here, Doctrine 6, that Jesus Christ is an earnest suitor for union and communion with the souls of sinners. And then John Flavel goes in to prove that doctrine. And he used different arguments that he uses. And the last thing I read, it says here, Christ was in the world as a lodestone drawing all men to him. His deportment was very every way suitable to his commission, which was to preach good tidings to the meek, bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Isaiah 51 verse 1. As 3. As his life, so his doctrine was a wooing and inviting doctrine, a most pathetical invitation unto sinners. Never a man spake as he spake, Whenever he opened his lips, heaven opened. The very heart of God was opened in it to sinners. The whole stream and current of his doctrine was one continual, powerful persuasive to draw sinners to him. This was his language. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. John 7, verse 37. Himself resembles it to the chuckling, clucking of a hen to gather her chickens under her wings. Luke 13, 34. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how would I have gathered thy children together as hen does gather her brew under her wings? Certainly the whole stream of the gospel is nothing else but the charming voice of the heavenly bridegroom. For the joy he always expressed by the success of the gospel speaks to him to be an earnest suitor for the hearts of sinners. It is very remarkable that in all the, all the evangelists who have recorded the life of Christ never mention one laugh or smile that ever came from him for he was a man of sorrows. Yet once you read that he rejoiced in the Spirit, and you shall see the occasion of it in Luke 10, 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. And what was it that gladdened his heart? But the report brought him by the seventy, and who returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Verses 17 and 18. Satan's kingdom was going down in the world, and the mysteries of salvation revealed unto babes. This made his holy heart leap with joy within him, 
to behold the success of the gospel of destroying Satan's kingdom, the poorest and meanest among men enlightened and converted by it. This was a cordial to his very soul and spake the earnestness of his desire after union and communion with sinners. Five, his sorrows and mourning upon the account of the obstinacy and unbelief of sinners speaks the vehemency of his desire after union with them. It is said in Mark 3, 5, when he had looked around about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. You see from hence that a hard heart is a grief to Jesus Christ. Oh, how tenderly did Christ resent it when Jerusalem rejected him. It is said in Luke 19.41 that when Jesus came nigh to the city, he wept over it. The Redeemer's heart, the Redeemer's tears wept over obstinate Jerusalem, spake the zeal and fervency of his affection for their salvation. Oh, how love Christ is to give up sinners. What a mournful voice is that in John 5.40, And you would not come unto me that you might have life. How fain would I give you life, but you would rather die than come unto me for it. What can Christ do more to express his willingness? All the sorrows that ever touched the heart of Christ from men were upon his account that they would not yield to his call and invitation. That's just a taste of John Flavel. So this is John Flavel. These are his sermons on Revelations. Also in here is the, his treatise on the mystery of divine providence. And then you have in volume four of John Flavel. Uh, this was also a series of sermons that were put into paperback called The Fountain of Life by John Flavel. It's called The Fountain of Life, Display of Christ in His Essential Military of Glory, 42 Sermons. That was also put in paperback, but this is in volume one. Then in volume two of John Flavel's works, The Method of Grace, uh, which is a very famous a treatise of the soul of man. Yeah, The Method of Grace, I, it's one of my favorite too. It's called The Method of Grace and the Gospel Redemption, the application of redemption and how it is affected. And then, in volume three of John Flavel's works is uh, a treatise of the soul of man, the righteous man's refuge, uh, the cause and cure of mental errors. Uh, and then you have, in volume five of the works of John Flavel, the seamen in that storm. John Flavel, his congregation was made up of captains of ships and sailors so he has like uh, he has a treatise the disappointed seaman a seaman a seaman in storm uh, the heavenly use of earthly things things like that and then in volume six of John Flavel's works an exposition on the Assembly's Catechism, the Westminster Assembly Catechism, uh, the Balm of the Covenant applied to afflicted saints, the reasonableness of personal reformation, sacramental meditations, things like that. So it's really worth buying the John Flavel's works by the great Puritan John Flavel, volume 6, I am five. Then you have uh, volume three, volume two, volume one, and volume four. So these are really worth having if you're into. They're all they're still available. Some Puritans works you can't get, but John Flavel is very popular and among those of who love the old writers. Also, I've been reading. On Revelations, this uh, commentary upon the book of Revelations by James Durham. James Durham, he lived from, he was a Scottish Puritan. Can't remember the years that he lived, but this is a reprint. You can see it has the old, the old print. 
It's a facsimile of a, I think, 18th century. It's been, I don't know, I, so I've been reading this along with this book, different passages. I was reading yesterday on these passages in John James Durham's commentary. It was on the uh, in chapter three of Revelations, and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your work. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength. For you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. So I was reading in this commentary on those verses. Another book, a more current book, if you want to read on Revelations, is More Than Conquerors. Interpretation of the Book of Revelations by William Hendrickson. This is my wife's book. She ha so these are the kind of things I read in the mornings for devotions. Read John Flavel, Trinity and the Book of Revelations, Biblical Reasoning, Christological and Trinitarian Rules for Exegesis by Jameson and Whitman, Christ's Disclosure of Himself, by William Grinnell, William Hendrickson, More Than Conquerors, Interpretation of the Book of Revelations, and J James Durham. Uh, I think this was first published, let me see, it might have a date in here, it was first published, uh, 1658. This was first published in 1658. I have other books by James Durham downstairs. That I've shown in the past videos. So yeah, so those verses always come to my mind when I'm reading Revelations where it says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come! And let him who hears say, Come. Let him who thirsts, Come. Whoever desires to let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify to you, to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if he takes away from the words of the book of the prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and be with you all. Amen. So the Lord testifies, Surely I am coming quickly. So life is very transitory. Life is quickly passing away. And Christ is knocking at the door of the hearts of sinners, inviting them to come to him in repentance and faith and enter into fellowship with him in communion. So I recommend the works of John Flavel. I recommend Trinity and the Book of Revelations, More Than Conquerors by William Hendrickson, Christ's Disclosure of Himself by William Greenhill. If you're into Biblical exegesis, biblical reasoning, and you can buy this. This is, comes out now in the two volumes, a more different edition by Reformation Heritage Books, Revelations, a commentary by James Durham. Above all, read the Bible, seek God's face, seek to come to Him and enjoy Him, to delight in Him, and to experience His love for eternity. So I hope you have a good reading week, a new, new blessed new year. And until next time, bye.